bounce, take. Pitch me tough, bounce, swing. A little earlier on the swing contact, bounce, swing. Again, it's learning relaxation and flow. Bounce, swing. Notice the voice is under control, therefore it's more of an effortless, fluid type of movement to the ball. In dealing with the, the voice, again, use the hum. You can combine it with the blind tee. You can combine closing off or using two different senses to accentuate things. But just bring the voice to a mmm level as you begin to work. And we'll merely toss the ball into the zone here with a regulation baseball. It's your little better feel. Go back to a regular soft toss or a quick toss type drill. Bring the voice up as the tosser prepares to give you the baseball to hit. Mm -hmm. And feel what type of change in the volume or the energy level of the hitter occurs upon release. Mm -hmm. Obviously there will be some increase, but the, the young hitter quite often has a explosion in his voice therefore telling him that he does not have any degree of relaxation that he's going to flow and then he's getting a spasmodic type of action I'm trying to reduce that again trying to hum mm, bang all right now we have energy control those three and others like that can be developed by you relative to your practice situation and what you're trying to accomplish again we're trying to accentuate feel. It's the most difficult of the three learning experiences. All of us generally hear and perceive well. We hear and see well and that's the way we've always been taught. But to learn to feel is the most difficult. Therefore, close off the sense of hearing or the sense of feel. You can go to the point of putting earplugs in the ears where you cannot hear anything. Many performers have done that to close off crowd noises and distractions. All we're trying to do is accentuate the senses getting aware of what they need in order for me to be a great hitter. Now let's clarify a couple of key terminologies. Again, we're down to the part where we're talking about final examination, uh, particularly in understanding. The two terms, timing and tempo, are important. The stride is a timing mechanism. When you take a step, when you decide when you take the step, is a timing mechanism. Once the step is taken and the trigger mechanism, lever assembly and release follow, that time between the step and the release is called tempo. We need some way to describe the two different techniques very, very clearly to those that we instruct, even if we're instructing ourselves. Another key is we must understand energy. And it's an important concept that you just say that kinetic energy is mass times velocity squared. So what we deal with in applying energy to the ball is the bat. And the velocity with which the bat is moving is twice as important as to the bat's weight or style. So get a bat we can move quickly. This is one of the great advantages of aluminum over wood. They're lighter, therefore we can move them more quickly. If aluminum and wood weighed the same, the ball has the same resiliency or same kinetic energy, basically. So velocity squared, how fast is the bat moving at the point of contact, is the important element that we're trying to achieve in our hitting technique. What we also want to deal with is another term, we'll tie it together to help understanding. Let the bat travel. If we take the bat in our hands and as we get to release, we want the bat to travel. We want this action through the zone. So often hitters take the bat and push it through the zone in a stiff bar lead arm situation, stiff the bat through the zone. They're stronger and longer, but they lose quickness and control. The hitting is elbows down, therefore let the bat travel. The hands, the prehensile grips are loose, therefore the bat's going to travel in here. It's one of the final exams for all hitters. Is he quick with the bat? Does he develop quickness, velocity, and does the bat travel? Another way to say it is flick the bat. The feeling of throwing the bat or flicking the bat to the ball, a flick, a relaxed quickness, maximize quickness and control, Flick the bat is a good term. You'll find other terms to describe letting the bat travel, but the key is to be able to release those pressure points and those power collectors all at the release area, nice, loose, and quickly. This is our final drill, our final examination drill for active hitting. Now, recall that we want the timing 
the reaction time of the hitter to be stressed just like it's a game reaction time. We want to deal with a half a second release. So I've got my short toss in my cages. Our cages are 20 wide by 45 long. And with that, we can set up a hitting site and a pitching site that's 30 feet distance from the thrower to the hitter. Now that's half the distance that a normal pitcher throws, obviously. What he can do from this position, however, is he can throw four or 500 pitches at 40 mile an hour, and I have the same reaction time and the same response time needed to hit a good 80 mile an hour fastball. We believe in what we call short toss, short quick drills. Batting practice is counterproductive. All types of practice is counterproductive if you deal with a velocity that doesn't make you deal with game type, response time, or reaction time. Now let's remember one real important educational concept as we close. Muscle memory. The muscles do remember past exercises. The key to hitting, of course, then is to practice into total response, automatic response, the sequential unlocking, the hitting machine system. It takes an awful lot of work. Along with that, understand that it takes about 30 days to learn a new motor skill. Most of us in hitting who collect knowledge and try to impart that knowledge on other people don't realize a basic learning concept. That is, it takes 30 days, approximately 30 days, to learn a new motor skill. So typically when you're learning, there is a little regression before you start progression. Be patient. Understand that motor skills take time to learn. And as a coach, most importantly, I must be tremendously patient with a hitter. There is a technique called the power of space repetition. If we teach something, the receiver of that knowledge must hear it five and six and seven times over a period of a couple or two or three or four weeks, maybe 30 days as in motor skill learning. If we repeat an idea eight, 10 times over 30 days, then the learner will respond. But if we repeat it once and expect for him to remember it and go work on it, it's not gonna happen. So I can give people my total system and most often we won't find anybody with the patience and the technical awareness to go out and work with it every day and make it happen for that particular hitter. Now, maybe one of the most important factors in hitting and all of hitting is what we call rhythm adjustment. You must adjust to the fastball. You must first take the fastball away. It is called rhythm adjustment. If I'm dealing with a 90 mile an hour, an 80 mile an hour, or a 70 mile an hour fastball, it requires a different timing of the stride foot. Remember, the tempo is going to be exactly the same. Therefore, I cannot start my stride at the same time if I'm facing a Nolan Ryan or a Tom Seaver or a Tommy John because they're 8 or 10 mile an hour between their fastballs. I set up my timing, my rhythm adjustment to the velocity being thrown. This is everybody makes it so important that you never take batting practice or quick drills or anything less than game velocity. All you do is develop bad habits and practice does make permanent. We want to uh, also make a point there. So often young people understand that practice makes perfect and we go through our lives with a trial and error type activity and that doesn't occur. Practice makes permanent. Therefore what you must do is develop a plan of action. Take the hundred or so tech uh, technical skills that we've talked about in this tape, set down a plan for yourself, afford yourself a certain amount of time that you're going to spend on each phase of hitting, whether it be step, the trigger, the lever, or the release in the star system of hitting. Let's say you spend an hour and a half a day. Now, spend at least 30 to 60 days doing this. This plan of action will result in perfect practice, and perfect practice makes for a permanent quality of hitter. And hitting can be learned. It's a skill that you're going to be excited about. And the next time I see you, hit the ball hard. <laughs>